once you become a parent, I think your thought processes change a little bit. You, you tend to need your support system a lot more. So while we were young people, we toyed with the idea. But once we had kids, I think we felt like we needed to be settled for a few more years. As the kids got older, we thought about it again. You know, my husband and I have always wanted, I think him more, I'm more of a homebody, but he's always wanted that experience of living in a different country. Welcome back to Who's Your Ama podcast, a podcast for mothers, brown mothers, by brown mothers. Why is that so awkward? Today we have a guest joining us virtually all the way from not so sunny UK. And <laughs> Rivana, can you introduce yourself and thank you for joining me and just share a little bit about who you are and then we can get into it. Thank you, Selena, and thank you for having me. Hi to everyone who is um, listening in, watching in. So my name is Rivana. I am a South African expat uh, living all the way in the United Kingdom, in London to be exact. Uh, I'm a mother of two girls, married to my husband for the last 11 years. We've been together for 15 years, so it's been a while. Um, I'm actually an optometrist by profession. Somewhere along the way, I got into social media and uh, I enjoy making videos and now. Uh, I do for a living and I tell people about our life here in London. I share about our experiences, our travels, about food um, and that's become a little passion project that's now turned into uh, what I do for a living. Okay, that is so, so, so cool. So I like to do something with my guests kind of to break the ice where we talk about our rose and our thorn for the week. So I'll go first to give you some time to think about it. A rose for me is that my husband and I have just now started going on dates again after having baby 11 months ago. So this week we were able to go on a little spa date and that was really nice. And I would say a thorn for the week is that I didn't get to exercise as much as I would have liked to. I only went to the gym once and I didn't fully push when I was there either. Um, but yeah, I take it one day at a time with eating and fitness. So that's my rose and thorn for the week. I love that. I absolutely love that. And I think it's so important because it gives you a moment to reflect on your week and to also just be grateful for growth while acknowledging where we maybe need to be better or where we, we you know, we could work on it. So I would say if I had to think about my rose for the week and it's the opposite of yours, I actually managed to work out three times this week and I had a oh. bit of a little um in my workouts so it actually makes me feel a lot better when I get a chance to work out so that was definitely my rose for the week my thorn for this week is, and I think it's purely because as a woman we go through um different uh levels in our hormones and I found that this week I felt very I didn't feel like myself in terms of um feeling I had lots of feelings of like um anxiousness and I think I gave into those feelings a lot this week whereas usually I can talk myself out of it um, and I feel like this week I think my form is maybe giving into the feelings rather than finding a way to get myself out of it but sometimes we have to actually just embrace it and how are you feeling now I think I feel a lot better and I think a bit of it a bit of the feelings that I was having was to do with my daughter writing her first exam uh, this week and uh, the preparation for that it's also the end of the school year the year the end of the school year here in uh, London or in the UK because we basically run a September to July school year so basically this is the last two weeks of school and there's a lot happening lots to remember lots to think about and I think that's where a lot of those feelings of anxiousness really came in yeah Oh, as long as you're feeling better now and I, I, taking I, you know what? I as they come embrace the fact that we won't feel 100% all the time and that's okay because that's life you know so I think just sometimes you to not feel okay is also okay yeah it's how you manage those highs and lows that will help you get through it that's good so like you said you and your family live in London um, can you share a little bit of your immigration story and how you guys went over why you went there and how it's been so far so I think like anybody everyone has at some point in their life thought about immigrating, thought about what it might be like to live in a different country. And for yeah. us, it actually, you know, it was something we toyed about, I think, as a young couple before we had kids. We got married in 2013. We welcomed our first child in 2014 very quickly. And um, 
Skip the harsh chemicals and join the sustainable beauty movement with Aram and Gold. Discover our natural, high-quality, organic, environmentally friendly skin and home care products. Nourish your skin with our body butters, scrubs, balms, and indulge your senses with our home care room mists and diffusers. I personally love the diffusers. We promise a symphony of organic ingredients, paraben-free and ethically sourced, bursting with nature's goodness. Bespoke and corporate gifting. If you're looking for something special, we can tailor-make conscious gift sets for any occasion. From balms to butters in the scents you love. Our products include whooped body butters, also one of my favorites, body scrub, lip scrub, lip balm, skin balm, beard oil, and beard wax. Find Aram and Gold, that's A-R-U-M and G-O-L-D on Facebook, Instagram, and selected products on Take A Lot. Once you become a parent, I think your thought process has changed a little bit. You, you tend to need your support system a lot more. So while we were young people, we toyed with the idea but once we had kids, I think we felt like we needed to be settled for a few more years. As the kids got older, we thought about it again. You know, my husband and I have always wanted, I think him more, I'm more of a homebody, but he's always wanted that experience of living in a different country, um, getting out of your comfort zone and just experiencing a different sort of life abroad. Mm-hmm. I love traveling, so I feel like we can get that in that way. But he really wanted that opportunity to live abroad. And I think that's a nice thing about being married, right? You take each other out of your comfort zones. And um, in that instance, it was something that he sort of talked me into. But our immigration story and us moving to London actually happened so quickly because um, he was approached by a recruitment agent on LinkedIn. And it basically happened for us within two months. So wow. it was the October that he actually was approached. He went through a few rounds of interviews. And yeah, we were sorting our visa processes in December. And then we moved to the end of Jan. So it all ended up happening so quickly. Um, but the process itself, I would say, it was, it, because it was quick for us, it felt very emotional as well. I had to tie up a lot of loose ends. We had to... Uh, sell off all of our furniture, we had to say goodbyes, all of it in this matter of two months. So it felt very emotional. It also felt very exciting because we came over and there's different ways to come over, obviously, to the UK. We came over on what's called a tour, a tier two skilled worker visa. So my husband was actually sponsored by a company for him to come over. So it can also be a costly experience, uh, especially for us, because obviously we were going over as his dependents. We're taking over two kids as well. We're setting up a whole life. So it also, the, the process was also quite uncertain. It was not something we've ever done before. I'm taking two kids along with me. So there was a lot of challenges. It was very scary, but it was also really exciting. And um, yeah, we're two years in now. And I, I think I feel like I'm in a lot of a bit of this. <laughs> That's so good to hear. It's You're right. It is, it's kind of uncommon to hear of something happening so quickly. And then also you guys basically started from scratch with new kids. Yeah. Well, with kids, yeah. Starting from scratch. Everything starts from yeah. scratch. And also in a place that you've never, you don't know, you don't know where to go get your stuff from. So we yeah, everyone... Been- We'd never even visited before. We wow. moved to a country that, that you've never been to. Visited. Did you know anyone there? Sorry? Did you know anyone there before you moved? We had some friends. So we had a few friends. Um, but yeah, we didn't, we didn't have any family here. Uh, so we were basically starting from scratch. And also, a lot of the times when you know somebody that's here, they're not going to necessarily be quite close to you. Also, London yes. itself, you could be living in London and it could take you an hour and a half to get to where the person is because, yes. just that way. you know, even whether you're driving, whether you're taking public transport, traffic is insane in London as well. So it doesn't necessarily mean you're close to somebody, you know, in terms of distance. So that's really key. Okay. Um, everyone looks from the outside and wants to relocate. I've thought about it many times. I still think about it quite often. Can you share some of the realities of living abroad, especially being away from your family and your safety net, so to speak? Yeah. So I would say, of course, the idea of living abroad is romanticized to a degree. And there's different elements that come with it. So there's a lot of adjustment, firstly, you are moving to a new country, so there's the adjustments of um, firstly just new cultures. There's homesickness, you're away from your family and your friends. You're starting your circle from scratch. 
you're starting your clear history from scratch, which was something you know we hadn't even thought about. You basically go into a country where they don't even know uh, how to verify you as a person. So you're basically starting everything from scratch. Yeah. And then there's also like a lot of practical aspects, right? So firstly, you got to understand how to navigate the health system. Um, you got to understand the local laws. There's so, so many things that you don't think about that's just second nature and easy to do in your own country yeah. that you now yes. have to learn or figure out how to do. Um, yeah. Some people might, you know, obviously not for us, but some people might have language barriers when they're moving to, yeah. to different countries. So there's that as well. But there's also cultural barriers. And I say this because South African culture itself, we have a very uh, warm, inviting, very friendly culture. And it's not to say that people aren't friendly here per se, but it's a different type of maybe socializing or the way people would do things, the way birthday parties happen. So everything is a little bit different and it is adjusting to that. Um, there's also adjusting to things like, I think in your physical body, you're, you have to adjust. It is a very big walking culture here. And in South Africa, it's a very big driving culture. So I, I would struggle to hit like um, my step count for the day in South Africa, right? Because I had a job where I was at a desk. Whereas yes. here, I take the kids to school and back and I've hit like 9,000 steps a day. You know? So it's a massive walking culture, but that takes a toll on your body. So I don't know whether it's age or the fact that I've moved countries in the world. <laughs> Something is taking a toll on my body these days. But there's that. Um, it's also adjusting to stuff like the weather. So that's the one thing I think that was a big adjustment for us. Mm-hmm. And the weather and how cold it was and what the seasons are like and not seeing the sun for days on end. So there's a lot of that. Um, and then it's also like the really hard stuff, the, the little things you take for granted in, in South Africa, the little um, bits of help that you get that, that does not yeah. necessarily become as easy uh, here. So there's that as well. Um, a lot of people do things for themselves here, like simple things that we would just get a guy to do. Yeah. <laughs> So you doing so everything comes in a flat pack. We moved houses recently and uh, we got new furniture, so we got couches, we got beds, and everything comes flat packed. So we have to do everything yourself. So um, so obviously you can get a guy to help you with assembly, but things are cost of living is really quite expensive. Mm-hmm. So I think that's something that people also have to bear in mind. But mm-hmm. at the same point, there are a lot of opportunities and a lot of experiences that I'm also grateful for. And it's yes. important to remember that those feelings can coexist. Yes. You can miss home, but enjoy your new country. You yes. can wish you had your friends and your family and you had time with them, more time with them, or that you spend time with them, while simultaneously enjoy making new friends. Those feelings yes. can coexist. And I think as an expat and somebody who's living in a different country, those feelings exist for me every single day. And you sometimes feel like you're leading this double life. Because I'm always thinking, what time is it in South Africa? What are they doing now? Should I call? What should I do? So you always have that one foot back home. But at the same time, you're also grateful for and enjoying the experiences that you have. And it's it's important to know that that can happen. So um, there's no, I always say there's no, you can never say that the grass is green on the other side. It is what you make of it. It is what you want for yourself. It's what you want out of the experience. And it's what you make of that experience. So it really is about your mindset and what you want out of it. 100%. And I like that you touched on um, South Africans and how warm we are and friendly we are. And I do believe that we do have a very unique culture. From um, travels, I've seen that not many people are as friendly as we are. So I want to know, is there anything specific that you and your husband are instilling into your daughters to maintain that South Africanness in them, but also to keep their South African Indian culture alive in them? You know, I think it's taken moving to a place like London that is so diverse to appreciate how unique we are as South African Indians, right? So I found, especially when my daughter started school, and for myself, even just in the experience of meeting people, the minute somebody meets me face-to-face, their immediate reaction is that I'm from India or Pakistan, and uh, they expect me to firstly know an Indian language uh, or to be from a specific part of India. And on face value, that is how we look. But because of our heritage and because of obviously we are like fourth, fifth generation in South Africa, there's been such a beautiful amalgamation of cultures that has come from having South, South Africa as a birth country, but having an Indian heritage. 
And I think us as South African Indians don't realize how unique and beautiful that actually is. Uh, and that's something I do try to instill in the girls every single day, especially now that they're growing up. Uh, and the one thing I think that it is that you have to do with your kids is just talk about it proudly. I'm always talking about it proudly. Uh, you know, whether it's it's the cooking stuff that is, you know, there was a heritage. Basically, they were talking about where we came from. We were talking about foods from different cultures. And I got my youngest to take in bunny chows, the little mini bunny chows, wow. because for me, that perfectly represented both parts of our who we are. You know, we're South African, but we're also of Indian descent, of you know, Indian heritage, and I want them to always embrace that they are South African and that they are Indian. So in terms of the Indian culture, there's many ways. I think there's a massive uh, Indian um, uh, community here, so there's lots of ways to stay in touch with that. So the girls are very involved in uh, like arts and culture in terms of dance and music, in terms of you know, being in touch with that Indian side. In terms of our uh, you know, we are Hindus. A lot of religious practices that I carry out here and that are really important to me. I always get the girls involved in that. As much as I do it, I do feel like I keep it simple so that the girls can always understand, so that it's not something that feels um, maybe too much for us because I want them to be able to continue that as well if, they, if it's something that they want to do uh, when they're older. But I want to make it easy, understandable. I want it to make sense for them. So I always try to do that just to make them a part of that. Um, but yeah, I think most importantly is just reminding them and showing them that you are proud of who you are helps them mm. to be proud of who they are. Yeah, that's so good. I, I got a little bit emotional when you started speaking about it. I feel like South Africa sometimes gets such a bad reputation, but honestly, we are such a unique nation. We have so much love for each other and there's so many there's so many good things about South Africans and it it makes I know some people say that they feel sad when talent leaves South Africa to work somewhere else but I don't see it that way I honestly feel like it's just it's spreading more South Africanness to other parts of the world and it feels so good to see that you and your husband are a young Indian couple with girls I also have a daughter doing so well in another country and it makes me feel happy and it makes me feel even more proud to be South African to be South African Indian so congratulations to you and your husband for doing this it is I don't know if maybe um, from your time being there it's felt like a small thing but I just want to bring it back to the front of your memory that it's not a small thing that you guys have done. And looking from the outside, I can say that I'm very proud of you and for the life that you guys have built in another Thank country. That, that really means a lot. Do you know if there's one thing that I have had to bring to the front of my mind, especially being a South African Indian now living in a, in, in a country like um, England or you know living in London where it's so diverse, is we always are, especially as South Africans, we tend to have bit of a complex about ourselves I guess um you know and we are as interesting as they are we are as interesting we are as exciting we are as interesting as they are so for example talking about who we are and our background people find that super exciting as well so a lot of times we go out thinking oh they're so cool they come from this place and they have this background and they lived here and they studied here we're just as exciting. We're just as interesting. So just be, I think that's a, a big learning curve because we tend to have, um, what is the word that I'm looking for? Um, imposter syndrome. Ooh. You know, so I, I just feel like that was something that I had to get to the front of my mind that we are as interesting, our culture is as interesting, it's as unique, it's as beautiful. And I just want to tell that story. So tell your story because you are worth speaking about and um yes yeah, laughing culture i think is just i think being here has made me appreciate how unique and beautiful it is and our food it's made me appreciate our food a lot <laughs> ah, i love that i love that so um like i said i had a baby 11 months ago and in this journey i've seen how important it is to have a community around you how has being alone so to speak impacted your marriage and what steps have you taken to keep your marriage a priority? So, you know, I must be honest, being away from your support system is really hard. Um, mm. And I think it's important to already be on a good footing when you do big things in life, anything big in life, whether it's starting a new job, whether it's deciding to have a baby, whether it's immigrating. I think you already need to be on a good footing because those sorts of things can be make or break in a marriage, in all honesty. You can either 
become really close or it can actually make you challenge each other more. So for us, I think, especially because it was something that my husband wanted more than I did at the time, it took a longer time for me to come on board. Um, when we got over here, you have to realize that you are both on the same team. Yes. You're not working against each other. You're working together. And, you know, one of the ways that we try to stay connected, and it's not easy because you don't have your, your friends and family here, Trusting people with your kids is really hard, and I'm sure you understand that feeling, especially as a first-time mom, it's even more difficult. But trusting somebody, having something that you trust around your kids is also really hard. So even for us to have gone on that first date to get a babysitter over, it, it takes time. So we try to invest time in each other, and we try to set those boundaries with the kids. So, for example, on certain evenings, especially um, you know on weekday nights, there's a certain time. Obviously, the kids have a better time; they have school the next day. But we set aside time where we sit and we will have dinner together, or you know, if we are engaging in a conversation, and sometimes if the kids uh, are wanting to get involved, we always still make sure that we put ourselves at the forefront of that, and just to always acknowledge that it's us first. And uh, we say that to the kids as well, you know, mommy and daddy. Um, we're talking now, we're going to be with you in a minute. So we always try to prioritize each other. We do try to do date nights. I'm going to be honest, though, it's really hard. It's not always easy to do that. But we do still try to make the most of the time that we do have together. So, for example, my husband was between um, jobs uh, a few weeks ago, and he's just started a new position. And uh, he had a few days off in between. It was around my birthday. So we actually took the time. The girls said, oh, can we stay out of school and come with you? We're like, no, 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 this, this two days are for us. And we literally just ate out. We just ate out for wow. a And we went on brunches together. We watched movies in the evening. Uh, we went out for lunch. We basically ate oh. lunch and dinner out at that point. Wow. But it was just, you know, it doesn't always come up as often as I would like it to, unfortunately. But we try and make effort and time for each other, whether it's cooking together or helping each other out. And a marriage, unfortunately, you know, I've read this somewhere, I can't even remember where, many, many years ago. A marriage, you know, they say it's 50-50, but it's not. It's not actually 50-50. You have to sometimes be very aware of when your partner is not able to give that 100% yes. themselves and be able to step up and know when to step up for each other and know when the other person is struggling. Uh, because it's so easy to go into yourself when you're struggling, but actually just having open lines of communication is so important and just knowing that you're actually on the same team. Yeah. My mother-in-law said something to me. Um, it was either when we first got married or when we were like very newly dating. She said that when she looks at Trevino and I, where he lacks, so to speak, is my strengths. And where I'm weak, he's strong. So I, I've carried that with me for all these years. And it's so important because, like you said, it's not always 50-50. Sometimes your partner can only give 20% and then you have to carry the weight for whatever it is, whether it's household chores or parenting or whatever it is. Yeah. So I really like that you said that. Yeah, no, 100%. <laughs> and uh, I think especially moving here, we've had to really understand what our strengths and our weaknesses are. Um, I gave up a full-time job to be at home with the kids because yeah. my husband yeah. was working on a very um, high-paced, high, uh, you know, like long working, going to be working longer hours and that sort of stuff. So I took on a different position in our household. So for me, it wasn't just immigrating and leaving my support system behind. It was also a complete career shift. Thankfully, I've been able to uh, make social media my line of income now. So it's been nice to have this additional income, but also just to have something for myself to do, something that keeps me going. And you know, I, I, I do feel like I am quite an ambitious person. So it's something that's kept me going as well. Um, and it's something for us to you know, just keep each other motivated as well. So, and we, 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 you always want to cheer each other along the way, you know. Uh, everything that you do at the end of the day is for the betterment of your family um, and your little youth. And that's just what you have to remember. So I want to know, how have you evolved as a woman and as a wife and as a mother, being so far away from your extended family, your friends, your support structure, your routine? Okay, so... Firstly, as a woman, let's start off as a woman. Yeah. I have had to become a lot more independent. Mm. I am not even going to sugarcoat it or lie about this, but I led a very sheltered life in South Africa with the amount of things that were just readily and easily available to me and the amount of support that was yeah. easily available to me. Um, so there's that. I've had to become a lot more independent. I have learned to wash whites 
and um, clean counters and clean dish counters. I didn't know how to do that. Today, surprisingly, oh. I ironed a shirt for my husband for the first time in the 15 years that we've been together. Why? Because wow. I've never ironed Wow. I, growing up, I'm <laughs> washed with me and I, this is going to sound terrible, guys. Don't judge me, but I don't know how to iron. I, I have this record of burning stuff. So my husband is <laughs> the designated ironer in this, in this marriage, in this household. When the girls need something, they say to dad, he's ironed. But today, for the first time in our 15 years together, I ironed something. The reason for that, though, <laughs> was because I needed to prove my husband wrong. He said, <laughs> it's not ironing the way it needs to be. We need to maybe look at another one. I said, no chance. There's nothing wrong with the iron. Let me check. And that's why yeah. I did that today. <laughs> oh, wow. I love that. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, as a woman, it's made me a lot more independent. I've had to really learn to do things that I never had to do before. I've learned resilience that I didn't know I had. Um I think as a wife, it's made me a lot more understanding and uh, patient. Uh, maybe my husband might beg to differ, but I think I've grown. <laughs> but I've, you know, I've seen a lot of, because of of, um, of the experiences that we have and this thing that we're in together, I think as a wife, it's brought me closer to my husband as well. It's brought us closer together and it's helped me understand, I think, him in a different light because I get to see a side of him that I didn't know before perhaps because you know it's very easy for a couple to be perfectly rosy and happy when things are good in your marriage and you are going through good times it's very easy for anyone you know but going through challenges and going through hardships and going through difficult times is what really tests a marriage so i would say that's going through this experience which is obviously challenging while at the same time it is exciting helped me to see a different side of him and definitely brought me closer to him so as a wife it's made me more understanding more patient um yeah I, I, um, and then as a mother honestly i think it's made me more resourceful and more creative wow. because i have had to figure out how to make sure that the kids stay connected to their culture still feel yeah. connected to their friends back home while embracing these new things that they are exposed to i love i love that I get to travel with them now. When we were in South Africa, I'm going to be honest, I used to take a seven-day holiday with my husband, leave the kids at home with the grannies and nannies, and um, I would take them on local holidays. I just didn't like the idea of how far away, everywhere that I wanted to visit was, and I would, I felt like it would not be a nice experience for them. I changed my, my mindset on that completely now. I love traveling with them. Yes, it's doing your routine in another country, which is not a routine, but I love seeing how they experience all of these things, and I love that for them. I love the friend circles that they have now, how diverse it is, that one day they're learning like a, a Polish uh, rhyme and tomorrow they're talking about a Brazilian dish that their friend, uh, you know, is having. So I love that they have exposure to that. So as a mother, I think um, it's also hard. It's also hard. Uh, it's been a difficult journey when my child wants to say traffic light rather than robot, like that's hard for me. Or they want to say jumper rather than jersey or their accent is starting to sound very, very British. So those parts are also hard. It's also, it's taught me to just be more open-minded and to embrace this change and embrace this experience that we're all going on. The one thing I was going to be, um, we all experienced together for the first time. So we come from South Africa, where it's uh, basically we lived, we grew, I grew up in a very tropical place in my hometown is Port Jefferson. I was living in Johannesburg, but generally, I mean, the winters in South Africa have not much to write home about. You know, we get a very simple winter. I never experienced snow in my life before. So did my husband. I mean, we've seen it from afar, but we've never had yeah. like, snow. And obviously, mm -hmm. the girls are quite young, so they hadn't experienced it either. The first December that we were living here, the one evening, it was uh, it was actually on my dad's birthday. Yeah. And uh, my dad, it was his heavenly birthday yeah. years ago. And I was having a very, very down day, obviously, dealing with my grief. Um, and that evening, they, they, they kept on saying it was going to snow for about three days. And on that evening on my dad's birthday it was around uh, i would say around five o'clock in the morning that we started to see that actually happen and then at around eight now it's getting to bedtime right and around eight it comes flurrying down like the snow just comes down so hard and i said to girls i know it's bedtime but we have to go outside by the time we went outside because it started like throwing maybe around five six o'clock by the time we went outside it was full-on like winter wonderland and we all got to experience snow for the first time. And that's just like a memory locked forever core moment. I think we all remember that. And uh, yeah, those experience, those moments that just keep you going. 
That is very, very sweet. Um, is there one final thing that you would like to share with other moms who wish to relocate? So I would say don't be scared to do it because I think fear holds us back a lot of the time. And for me, it was that fear. I always have, you know, I, I, because of my uh, social media platforms, I'm always chatting to people who think about it, but maybe don't know how to leave their family or they're scared of it. I think if it's something that you're thinking about, go for it and do it. Don't let fear hold you back because life is short, but life is also long, right? So I always say this because while life is really short, you want to also realize that life is to be experienced. And if there's something that you really want to do, go for it, uh, experience it, try it out. If it doesn't work, so what? Come back. You know, there's always this this idea that if you go, you're not coming back. Or if you go, that's it. You're not ending something by leaving South Africa and moving abroad. You could do it for a few years. You could do it for the experience and come back. But take that opportunity, you know, if it comes about and just do it. Be open-minded about it. Embrace it. Um, if you are in the process currently of moving over, and I say this to people when if they ask me if there's one piece of advice I would give to somebody that's in the process, don't expect to copy-paste your life in South Africa. Yeah. Just be open to the experience and be open to embracing things as they come and just take it as it comes. So that, I think, would be my, my uh, advice to anybody who is thinking about it or in the process of it. Um, yeah, basically. Mm. Wow. Thank you so much. I also learned a lot from speaking to you now because, like I said, it is something that I've thought about. So I am very excited about what we just spoke about. And thank you again. I know that you had other commitments and I know I ran a bit late. But thank you so much again for joining me on this podcast. And if you can just tell us um, where we can find you, which social media platforms, I will link everything in this video. But just to let everyone know where they can find you. Yeah, so you can find me over on Instagram, on TikTok, on Facebook. My page is called The Daily Leave. So it was a bit of a toy on words of uh, like a newspaper article, The Daily Leave, you know, so uh, The Daily Leave. So basically just a daily snippet into my life. Uh, we share about traveling, we share about uh, our experience as expats here in the UK. Um, yeah, but uh, also on YouTube, so if you want to follow me over on YouTube, there's a lot more informational videos on there where I share about our immigration experience. But if you're into more of the lifestyle stuff, the fun stuff, the travel stuff, um, family stuff, then yeah, find me over on uh, Facebook, Instagram. Wow, thank you so much for joining us. And yeah, have a good day, and I will speak to you very soon. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure.